Hey, you guys, I'm sitting out here this morning in my backyard and I am just enjoying this day. And I'm popping on here to do a live because, geez, you guys, I have gotten so, 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 so many emails and texts and wow, I can't even tell you, post right on my social page here that have asked what my take is on this Scottish opinion of immunity, okay? And, you know, a lot of you guys are like, you know, you're the lead with love lady. I'm looking for some advice about how I can handle this and what's going on and <laughs> shit, you guys. Um, I know a lot of you see me as the lead with love person, okay? And I, and I am the lead with love lady and love is of course patient and it's kind and it's compassionate and we look at both sides of the fence before making a judgment and all those things, that's love. Um, guys, love is also a firewall, okay? Love is great bravery. Love is a firewall between balance and terrific imbalance. It cuts, it cuts right in between those things. Love is gritty and love is tough. And love just doesn't lay down and let the world walk on top of it if it is creating harm, okay? Now we could all debate on what harm is. A very, 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 very evangelical Christian person might say harm is a gay person, okay? Uh, whatever, we, we might debate what harm is, but I think we can all universally agree that when you agree to being in a country whose constitution dictates rules and the democracy is built on those rules, and then that constitution is outright defied by six people who are in the legal authority to attempt to defy that, I think we can all agree that there's an imbalance here. Now, I know a lot of you want to hear me say, I know a lot of you want to hear me say, guess what? It's all fine. This is all fine. It's going to be fine. Well, does love win in the end? Well, sure, but not without a shit ton of work on our behalf, you guys. And the fact of the matter is, I know a lot of you are texting me and saying, psychically, what do you see? Well, let, let's just catch up to what I've predicted on already. I already talked in 2023 about the fact that the Supreme Court of the United States was going to rule on this. Well, they didn't rule, it was an opinion, was gonna form an opinion on this and they were gonna pass it back down to the lower courts, which we know they did. Also, I talked about the fact that they were going to put forth uh, either an opinion or a ruling or something that was so milk toast. It was going to be so milk toast that it wouldn't hang them up with any specific opinion. Okay. Now they kind of did that, although they went a step beyond and shocked the crap right out of me. They said that the president of the United States is immune from any illegal definition while they're the president, any president. Any president, it's part of the job. Well, the thing that I think is startling about that is it is very milk toast because then you have to define what does immunity mean? What does immunity mean? And what does the law mean? And that is very, 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 very milk toast. But at the same time, it was very definitive. It was very definitive. So I just wanted to do a small uh, recap on that because they did. They did pass down the milk toast ruling, but it was a little bit more freaky specific than I thought. So here's what I would tell you. Um, guys, we have to get in there and understand that somebody who works in the legal field has got to interrupt this opinion. And the reason I'm saying that is because these six people, all, all, all of them, all nine of them, were sworn in to protect and uphold the Constitution of the United States and its laws. Nowhere in the Constitution of the United States does it state that any one human being has full immunity of the American set of laws for any reason. It, as a matter of fact, it even states in fancier terms that the person who would be the leader of this country or the president is not immune from the laws. So 
I've got a fourth grade, fourth grade civics education, and even I am seeing this. So why the heck we don't have, say, the Attorney General of the United States or someone else stepping up to say, guys, no, now I'm sorry, but the Constitution states that not one person, not one person is above the law here, and you're supposed to be upholding the Constitution, and you just delivered an opinion in violation of the Constitution, that voids your contract for employment. You have voided the contract and your oath, therefore you can no longer fulfill this job. I mean, it's one thing to rule on Roe v. Wade. I was absolutely not for the latest Supreme Court ruling of that. However, they stayed within the bounds of the law and they handed it back to the states. This presidential immunity opinion, you guys, is, violates the Constitution of the United States, which violates their oath, which nullifies their contract for employment. Now, I understand that their AOC wants to go out there and, and impeach them and all these things, but really, let's let's just be real about that. Impeachment, you guys. Bill Clinton was impeached. He was still the president. Trump was impeached twice. He was still the president. Impeachment doesn't do anything. It's a slap on the wrist. These Supreme Court justices are in violation of upholding the law. That voids their contract for employment. That voids their oath. Now, why somebody who has, does it, I, I should say, why somebody who has a greater education in law hasn't approached this, I don't know yet. Why somebody hasn't issued an opinion about this, I don't know yet. Um, and it's startling to me. However, I will tell you this. We are in a pickle, guys. And I know a lot of you depend on me for uplifting messages and all these things. And fact of the matter is, I, I can't really give you an uplifting message on this one, except for the fact that where our strength must come from is having some confidence in the Constitution of the United States in, and upholding that Constitution and being fearless and nonviolent in doing so. We can legally do this, guys, but I'm going to tell you straight out, how did we get here? How did we get here? How did we get here with a, a Scotus that defies the Constitution of the United States? How did we get here? I'll tell you how we got here, guys. And some of you aren't going to like it. And some of you are probably going to stop following me. And that's okay. Okay? However, we got here because we didn't learn the spiritual lessons coming up to this point, guys. We failed the COVID lesson categorically as a collective nation. We were supposed to come together and even if it made us feel weird to wear a mask or it made us feel like our personal liberties were violated, the exercise there was communion and community, giving up of the self for five seconds for the greater whole. Now look, I know there's a lot of you that believe COVID isn't even real, okay? So what, let's pretend it's not, it is real, but let's pretend it wasn't real. Uh, the exercise was still doing something for the betterment and the psyche of the whole. Now, a lot of you are going to disagree, but I'm sorry. You want to know what the deal is? We failed that lesson. We failed it. We had people running around. Some people were adhering to it. Other people were running around. My rights, my rights. I don't want to wear a mask. F you. Here's my gun. I'm an American. My God, we couldn't even think of others for five seconds. We couldn't. We had to think about us. We failed that one. So, of course, we failed in stepping out to become mindful of a larger body than just us. Our democracy, guys, our democracy dictates that we all participate. We all participate. And people are throwing that responsibility away. We don't want to participate. We don't want to vote. We don't want to. We're throwing that responsibility out the window. What do you think the universe is going to do for a bunch of people who sit on their asses and don't work towards a better solution? You think God's going to float down on a cloud and say, oh, that's okay. You just keep sitting in that, that lazy boy eating your potato chips and watching your Netflix. That's fine. I'll just make it fine for you anyway. Guys, psychologically and spiritually, that is called entitlement, okay? Now, I understand that a lot of you don't want to hear this today, but the fact of the matter is we are in a pickle and we aren't getting out of it until we all crawl into our flesh suits called the body. We stop pretending that we are not part of this third dimension, and that's what people want to do. We want to meditate into oblivion and pretend that we don't have any responsibilities down here, and we do. And we start paying attention to what 
creates the democracy that we've been living in. We've got to pay attention and we've got to participate. Now, I know a lot of really, really great Republican people who are being silenced by the big corporate party because they're not falling in line with what would be fundraising. So they're being shut up and these wonderful Republican people are out there going, guys, 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 I don't care who you marry. I don't care if you have an abortion. Let's just balance our damn budget and everybody work hard. And there is a section of the corporate Republican party that doesn't wanna hear that because it's not fundraising right now. We have Democrats out here going, look, I do think you need to have a job. I do think you need to work hard. I think we need to be beautiful, productive people in our society, but we can't oppress other other people, but we gotta have the tits and balls to stand up and say enough is enough. The big corporate Democratic Party doesn't want to hear that either because it's not fundraising. So we gotta quit acting spiritually like the tail that's wagging the dog is normal. We have to stop that. There are great people in the Democratic Party. There are great people in the Republican Party. There are great people in our neighborhoods. People are not our enemies, okay? Ineffective ideologies that don't work need to be interrupted. That is the issue. Your neighbor who's a Democrat or your Republican neighbor is not your enemy. They are in the same pickle you're in. Because if Joe Biden goes absolutely batshit crazy right now and gets on social media after this Supreme Court opinion and tells everybody out there to grab a gun and go do terrible things and people go do those things, those people will go to prison. Joe Biden will be immune. This makes no sense. This ruling is in violation of the Constitution of the United States of America. So what I would tell you, you guys, is Biden's not going to do that. He's not that guy. We have somebody else running for president who would love this ultimate power. That's a problem. Please don't vote that person in. However, what I'm telling you guys is that it is a nonsensical law a nonsensical law. So what does this mean spiritually for all of us, guys? It means that we have got to start to pay attention to where we're at. I, I'll be transparent. I'm a Biden voter. I'm going to vote for Joe Biden. I personally think that Trump is off his rails, okay? And there's people that their vote's going to cancel my vote out. But I'm seeing that those who are rooting for a constitutional Whatever this is, it would have to be a constitutional amendment. Those who are rooting for this, guys, you're rooting for it for the wrong reasons. And I use Biden as an example because he's not going to do that. He's not going to tell people to go get guns and hurt anybody. I used him as an example because he's not. But guys, if you are someone out there that believes that this is patriotism, you are not seeing the bigger picture. You want my take on all this? Here's the bigger picture, you guys. We have had Russia. We have had other world governments trying to destabilize us from the inside out, creating messages through disinformation called QAnon. You guys, QAnon was originally a Russian disinformation factory that started years ago and created all this distrust and craziness. So there are so many out there that are so twisted in so many different directions thinking this is patriotism. It's not. Guys, we are off balance here. And I, I don't suggest anyone ever do anything violent. Violence isn't going to solve this problem. Protests aren't going to solve this problem. Legal action is going to solve this problem. And somebody out there has going has got to have the tits and the balls with the legal background to step up and say you were violating the Constitution of the United States, therefore you avoided your contract and you're fired. There is no impeachment. There is no going around and trying to get a consensus on this. You're just damn fired. Because if I violated my contract at my workplace, I would be fired. These guys took an oath. They violated it. They're fired. The problem is we do not have anybody anybody yet and i'm i'm issuing a challenge to you i'm issuing a challenge to the republicans i'm issuing a challenge to the democrats i'm issuing a challenge to human beings out there who have more than my fourth grade education in civics to step up and issue a voidance of contract here with the justices that want to defy the constitution you can't do that and we're acting like the Supreme Court is like nine oracles or some fucked up thing. You guys, they're human beings and they have a job to do just like all of us. And they have rules to their job and they have voided those rules. 
So if you're asking me, what is my take on all of this? Is it going to be fine? Well, it's not going to be fine if we just sit back and hope it's fine. It's going to be absolutely not fine. This is not fine, guys. This is a bad deal. And it's a bad deal because spiritually America just isn't showing up. And when it is showing up, it's showing up for all these stupid reasons that are violent and storming the Capitol. We are not showing up for the reasons we should, which are the balancing and upholding of this incredible scaffold, this experiment called democracy. This was never intended to be a static venture, democracy. This was intended to go ahead and evolve. And we are not weighing in humanity and America with evolving it. We're sitting back hoping somebody fixes it. We are energetically asking for a dictator. Are you aware of that? We are energetically asking for a dictator by sitting back and saying, I don't want to do it. I don't want to get involved anymore. It's too much. It's too much. Well, no shit. It's too much. I mean, we're a country that affects the rest of the world. The rest of the world. Got a medical helicopter overhead here. Of course people want to take over this nation because of the money and the reach. It is up to me. It is up to you. It is up to people. Good people, good Democrats, good Republicans, good independents, good who gives a shit about our political labels. Good people, it is up to us to beg those who can legally stop this from happening to get up there and do it. If you're somebody who is in the legal field and you're hearing me say this to you and you're saying to yourself, oh hell, that's a hell of a hill to climb. I don't know how to do it. If you're the president of the United States, Joe Biden, hello, you should put this ahead of you getting elected again, Pete Buttigieg, any of you Democrats out there who are high profile ought to be talking with legal experts to nullify these contracts if POTUS continues to defy the Constitution by claiming that one person is immune from the law and the Constitution says nobody's immune from the law. But we're not having those people step up either. Now, I'm not hacking on Biden. I'm just saying cowardice is human. And I'm not saying Biden's a coward. I'm saying somebody needs to step out and speak out about this besides some middle-aged psychic in my damn backyard in Billings, Montana that does not have the legal acumen or connections to actually do what needs to be done. So no, guys, this is not okay. This is not just gonna end up okay if we do nothing. We gotta do something. Love, love tries. Love gets out there with a good kind heart, doesn't blame, but seeks an answer. Love gives you tits and balls a mile high, guys. And maybe, I don't know, I mean, I, maybe it's just me, guys. I don't know, I'm Gen X, and we literally do not give one flat fuck what anybody thinks about us. So maybe it's just me. Uh, but I really wish and I hope that somebody will step forward and do what needs to be done here. And this is for the country. It's not about Donald Trump. It's not about Joe Biden. This defied our constitution, guys. And the minute our constitution is defied, it will continue to be defied. So please don't be the spiritual being out there that wants to give all the responsibility away. I know there's a lot of you. I can feel you going, well, what the fuck am I supposed to do with all this? Um, you know, write your letters, call your people, Talk to your friends who are lawyers. Constitutionally, this is incorrect. Constitutionally, this ruling can't even stand. It defies the Constitution. Fourth grade civics. Hello. So how about when we lead with love? We go about notifying the people who can do something about this in a way that has faith in them. That has a way that, that believes in them, that takes the R and the D off the front of their name and addresses them as a human being. And we're all just trying to make the best melting pot we can here, guys. And if we sit on our asses and we decide it's not a big deal, or there's those of you that think this is the best ruling in the world because you're very pro-Trump, it's not the best ruling in the world, guys. It's not. If we can all come together and decide that, yeah, this is bullshit, man. And just have somebody get in there and say, sorry, Supreme Court, you're fired or something. That would be helpful. Leading with love is in how we do it. 
We don't do it with violence. We don't do it with upheaval. We don't do it with histrionics. We don't do it with Project 2025, which seeks to diminish and demolish everything this democracy has built over the how many, two, three hundred years, however long we've been around. I don't even know. I didn't do the math today. We must have bravery. And we got to quit being such chicken shits. For those that, that rely on votes, stop it. You know, just stop it. Do what's f fucking right, you guys. You know, I tried to get into politics. I really did. And the establishment, I'm not the favorite of the establishment. And it's not because I don't listen and I'm not a team player. It's because I wig people out. Because I am just not fucking afraid to have people not like me. I'm a psychic. I'm gay. What else can you not like me for? Come on. So I tried and it was not something the larger establishment was going to allow. And I don't, I'm not saying the Democratic Party of Montana kicked me out or anything like that. It, it's, it's a bigger discussion. However, I will tell you that there are good people in the Democratic Party. There are good people in the Republican Party. There are great people in both parties. Mitch McConnell hasn't even said a word on this ruling. Oh, Mitch. Oh, Mitch, the entrenched Republican was like, what the actual fuck with this? This just defied the Constitution. He's a constitutionalist. What the hell is he going to say? He said nothing because it's crazy. So I know this is kind of long winded today, you guys, but there are so many layers to this and why we're here. And if we do not decide to wake the fuck up and be present in being a participant in our democracy, this is going to continue to happen. And, and please, if, if you're addicted to your political labels, go for it. But this isn't about your label. It's about the dream of what the United States could be. It's about what we could be. And we've let ourselves down. We've, we've excelled in some areas. We've gone backwards in others. We can be anything we want in this country. Right now, we're seeing people in this country trying to take us back to 1815. And we can be anything we want. But it's going to take the effort of those with vision. It's going to take the compassionate bravery, the unyielding fire in the belly to continue to show up. We failed the COVID exercise, the collective exercise. If we go into this next exercise with the Supreme Court and we team off and we get super polarized and we make it about Republicans and Democrats, we're going to fail it again. I can keep saying this and it's pissing everybody off. It's pissing my lefties off. It's pissing my right friends off. It's pissing everybody off. But the fact is we've got to come to the center and decide that the tenets of the United States of America are what are worth advocating for. You don't fight fire with fire, guys. You bring a big ass bucket of water on it and you say that is enough. So that's where we're at as a country. We are being asked to rise to the occasion and collectively succeed. That means stopping the polarized hatred and it means stopping the blame and it means coming together to create this ongoing experiment. And if we can't do that, I'll be straight out with you. If we can't do that, if we can't come together in one of the most blessed and honestly slightly entitled countries on the planet, if we can't do that here, wow, wow, you guys, I put that on me. I put that on all of us. I put it on six people who just defied the Constitution of the United States and violated their oath. I put it on all the chicken shit folks out there who could hold them to account and they're not doing it. I put it on those people too. If you are a person in office right now and you accepted that responsibility, get the fuck off your ass and do your job. Because if you don't and your cowardice leads forward and your avarice to get reelected next time takes precedent and you're afraid of letting people down or making your constituents mad, you have failed in your job as a civic servant. 
So people, let's reach deep. Let's find our grit. Let's find our bravery. Let's come together without blame. Let's come together in common cause. Let's find the people who finally just don't give a fuck if people don't like them. That would be nice. And do the right thing for the right reasons rather than worrying about polling numbers. Let's do that. Let's get all those folks forward. God, you know why the hell Trump has done so well with this small group that love him? It's because that guy who's clearly, clearly got something off. I don't know what the clinical diagnosis would be, but he acts like a sociopathic narcissist. I don't know what he is, but he literally doesn't give a shit what anybody thinks. At the same time, he heavily gives a shit about what everybody thinks. But the first part of it pushes him past. And then he falls into this panic about it. So why don't we have somebody step forward who really wants to do the right thing for the right reasons? And if it makes you unpopular with some people, buck the fuck up, man. God, we're grownups. Not everybody's going to like us. That's my spiritual message for everybody today. Not everybody's going to like you. So do the right thing anyway. Not everybody's going to stand by you, but do the right thing anyway. That is my spiritual message for you. And if that loses me followers, well, guess what? At least I didn't lie to you. All right. We got this if we can get in there and we can just keep our heads and do what we need to do for the right reasons and stop blaming. Okay. That's the spiritual message and the social message. So, um, thank you. Carly, thank you for saying I look awesome. This is my top of the morning finest out here. One last thing, you guys. Um, you know, I've had a couple of you emailing me and, and saying things like, um, you haven't been commenting as much. You know, what are the spiritual messages for this time? Uh, you guys were ignoring the spiritual messages, so I, haven't, I really haven't known how to put them out. We're not responding to the universe saying get up off your ass and try. We're just, we're just melting and hoping somebody fixes it. And you are the miracle. You are the answer. We are the collective. We are the ones who will come forward and make this better. Republicans, Democrats, independents, in-betweens, Christians, atheists, Muslims, Hindus. We as a collective on this planet are the answer. And if you can't believe that, I can't help you. You guys have a great day, okay? I'm going to go get more coffee. I got shit to do today, man. I love you all.